All right, with that down, let's get to main topic number two. And the second main topic comes from Insurance Journal. And it, the headline reads, Amazon's heavily automated frugal HR leaves sick workers in limbo. Now, Amazon is another company that claims they are doing the right thing in this pandemic. And of course, when they started out, even me, someone who does not like Amazon, who does not miss an opportunity to criticize them and make my case for why you shouldn't shop for Amazon anymore, had to admit that their response was pretty good. Like, hey, we're going to give hazard pay. We're going to set up these new uh, systems, these new barriers. We're going to provide masks. And we are going to listen to our employees' concerns. And we are going to do things as safely as possible. And I liked that. I liked that quite a bit. Of course, it didn't take long to find out that the hazard pay was being lifted before the hazard was over. It did not take us long to find out that they were firing employees that raised concerns about safety awareness. They were not providing the masks. I think they have the masks now, but they were not doing a good job of getting those masks to their employees like they said they were. And their little safety measures in the warehouses didn't do much. And there were more pe people getting sick in the warehouse. Amazon warehouses, if you worked at an Amazon warehouse, like I would definitely test yourself to see if you have the C virus. Because almost every single Amazon warehouse has had cases of the C virus in the warehouse. Well, then they did other things, of course, like if they felt that your temperature was high, they were going to send you home, but they were going to pay you half the amount of money you would normally get. You know, Amazon just finds a way to basically be the big bully. And it turns out that they have actually automated their HR and sick workers are left in limbo. So let's look at this. Tony Banks told Amazon.com Incorporated right away when he tested positive for the C-virus. More than a month later, he's on the mend but struggling with fatigue and shortness of breath that makes most physical activity feel like he's just sprinted up a hill. By the way, here's something to keep in mind. Even when you recover from this thing, it can have long-term effects on your lungs and your kidney. So, for those of you who think getting it is not that big of a deal, mm-hmm. Anyway, Banks says he's in no shape to return to work at the Indiana warehouse where he walks miles every shift. Yet somewhere in an Amazon human resources operation that already extended his medical leave once, Banks is seen as an employee abandoning his job. The company has twice in recent weeks initiated automatic termination proceedings against him for missing shifts. Never mind that, you know, Amazon said they were going to be caring towards an employee. They are not caring. Keep in mind. Now, let me explain something to you, just in case some people aren't aware that this, this exists. Amazon has a points system. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what a points system is, um, let's go over here for just a second so I can explain. A points system is a system in which a, a workplace set, sets up points. Like, okay, you know what? Whether you're late or you call out sick or you take a personal day, you know what? There's really no questions asked. Instead of asking questions, instead of debating whether or not that tardiness or that sick call out was really justified, they instead give you a point. And once you get so many points, it will trigger a written, a verbal, and then Term, termination. Now, I dealt with the point system when I worked at Disneyland. And this might, it might be a little different now, because keep in mind, this was like 10 years ago. But when I worked at Disneyland, as a full-time cast member, we were allowed 40 points. Like, and they had like a system where it's like, if you got so many points within a certain amount of time, it would trigger a verbal or a written. And 
you know, and if you went so long between points, you could get like a certain amount of points here, not get points for a while, get a certain amount of points there. And even though that would normally trigger the the verbal, because they were so far apart, it'd be considered an anomaly, so you wouldn't get one. If you hit your max points, if you hit 40 points termination at that point, it's on record, you are messing up way too often, you will get terminated. And their point system, I have to say, was very generous. So, for example, if you called out sick one day, that sick day would net you three points. And you could actually call out four additional days sick on those same three points. So you could get five days off. That would cost you three points. If you were late, like, and there was like a five-minute grace period. like. But if you were late, you would get like a point and a half. So it was very fair, and it gave a lot of leg room. So it's like, hey, you know what? As long as you were not excessively late or excessively calling out. And by the way, if you were calling out sick and getting points, if you saw a doctor and got a doctor's note, you could even get the points removed. Because then it's like, okay, you have proven that you were sick and you're not just abusing the system. So we'll take those points off. off. They didn't want to punish you for legitimately being sick. So in theory, the point system is a very good method. You see casinos use, use this. And I, I think, honestly, every... I think every place of employment, with maybe the exception of some small businesses that hire two employees to come to work, should have a points system. Now, Amazon's point system, how many points do you think an Amazon employee is allowed to have before they are terminated? Do you think it's 30? Go lower. You think it's 20? Go lower. You think it's 10? Go lower. You think it's 5? Go lower. From what I understand, Amazon employees are allowed 3 points. 3 points. And if you're late, you get a point. If you call out sick, you get a point and a half. Not a lot of wiggle room, you know, for legitimate problems. And I do not know if you get a doctor's note if the points can be removed. I would not be surprised if the answer was no. So when I read this article here, and you see that he's missed just a couple of days because he's trying to find a new normal for having had this creepy crud thing, and he just doesn't know what else to to do? Well, guess what? That's why termination gets triggered. And one of the negative things about a point system, unfortunately, is during a pandemic, this can all be automated because it's all in a system. So let's continue this article. Bank says, I understand that it's overwhelming right now, but for all the resources they have, it's almost like a mom and pop operation. Actually, I would argue that it wasn't because if it was a mom and pop operation, you could call the mom and pop and actually talk to them. Amazon is actually so corporate and they use these resources specifically to hold you down. So after suffering delivery delays and mass absenteeism during the early weeks of the pandemic, Amazon has hit another snag. A human resources department ill-prepared to handle the thousands of requests pouring in from sick employees and those who need to stay home to care for their children or elderly relatives. It's unclear how many employees are stuck in limbo, but Bloomberg spoke with six such workers who work in facilities from New Jersey to Indiana. They say their owed back pay for time spent on sick leave or in quarantine have been scheduled for shifts while sick or were detained Le sorry, were denied leave despite providing documentation of conditions Amazon says should make them eligible to stay home without pay. So, many companies would struggle with this unprecedented emergency made harder by the federal government's largely ineffective response to a pandemic that has sickened more than 1.8 million people and killed more than 100,000. But the design of Amazon's HR department reflects the strengths and weaknesses of the company's culture. 
It's heavily automated, which helps Amazon grow quickly and restrain costs, but these days leaves employees hitting dead ends with chatbots, smartphone apps, and phone trees. Exactly. So, and here's the thing. HR is something you don't want to be automating in the first place. The whole point of HR is that HR is, in effect, for the employees. It's a buffer for, like, the company who might want to hear the employees' concerns but don't have the resources and don't want, you know, just basic human error to get in the way of hearing um, employees' complaints. And when you automate that, that means algorithms, that means programming. What do you think is going to happen in those situations? The algorithms and the programming is going to favor the company not the employee. So, I guess I will add this one little thing. Amazon, of course, says says uh, banks, the employee threatened with termination, shouldn't have received those notices and that they were sent after banks failed to more proof of the condition when applying to extend the leave. You know what? Doesn't matter, Amazon. Doesn't matter. He, Bottom line, he has the paperwork. You got to fix this. Will you actually fix this? Probably not, because Amazon does not care about this oh hey dustin joined us and so did uh matthew well welcome guys so it's live (laughs) just let you know so anyway yeah that's amazon in the world of you know the c virus they're basically just as bad as they were beforehand um and they need to totally revise their point system three points is absolutely ridiculous but Hey, for all of those who are watching this in the future, after we're no longer live and all that jazz, I'd like to know what you think about all this. Do you agree with Amazon? Do you agree with banks? Uh, what would you? What do you think Amazon should do differently in this situation? I would love to know. So, comment below, uh, like, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly.